I'm Joe Scarber with MSNBC's Morning Joe, and I'm going to play, show you a few uh, of my favorites uh, in music. Let's start, well, we'll start with the Beatles. There we go. An absolute Beatles fanatic, uh, but uh, the Beatles' swan song, Abbey Road, it was actually the last album they recorded, even though the last album they released was Let It Be. But this is an absolutely remarkable CD. Uh, I grew up... Uh, in high school, all my friends were listening to KISS and ACDC. I uh, was listening to the White Album and Abbey Road on headphones. Second side of Abbey Road, absolutely uh, transcendent. Uh, and uh, my favorite, perhaps my favorite Beatles song uh, is uh, You Never Give Me Your Money. So Abbey Road, kind of obvious, but also kind of great. Radiohead, OK Computer, uh, I think without a doubt. I, just showed you with Abbey Road, the best, song, best album, I think, of the 1960s. I think Radiohead's uh, OK Computer, easily uh, the best CD of the 1990s. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. My, actually, my two favorite songs on here are the fourth and fifth songs, Ex Exit Music uh, and Let Down. Radiohead, OK Computer, remarkable stuff. All right, two Elvis Costello CDs. Uh, first of all, My Aim is True. It's the first Elvis Costello uh, album that he did. I think he recorded it in his off hours. Uh, he would work throughout the day and then recorded it actually with band members from the Doobie Brothers, if you can believe that. Uh, uh, nobody could have uh, known. He did this, I think, 1977, 1978. Elvis Costello would become really the greatest songwriter in England in uh, rock since uh, the Beatles. Imperial Bedroom, about five or six albums later. Came out, I think, about 1987 or so, 86, 87. Uh, Imperial Bedroom is an absolutely phenomenal CD, underrated. Um, I, I was going to pick my favorites, but God, they're all great. Man, I guess I would stick with Man Out of Time. Extraordinary song. This has to be on everybody's top 10 uh, albums, rock history. The Clash, London Calling. Uh, again, just an extraordinary CD from an extraordinary time. Like Elvis Costello, they helped really uh, redefine what rock and roll was. London Calling, a big favorite, favorite of mine for a very long time. And uh, finally, a guy that uh, you had at Borders, at uh, The Mothership, uh, Brian Wilson's, uh, really his swan song also, Pet Sounds. It came out and uh, there had never been a CD like it before, an album like it before. In fact, it was so ahead of its time that Mike Love, who was one of the lead singers in the Beach Boys, I actually hated uh, this CD. Didn't think it was, uh, didn't think it was true to uh, the Beach Boys. And as a uh, as a music uh, historian of sorts, uh, I love the fact that Pet Sounds inspired Sgt. Pepper's, which of course uh, took music in a completely different way. And Paul McCartney uh, this is his favorite. Says this is his favorite uh, album, and says that God only knows this is his favorite song ever. If it's all right with Sir Paul, it's okay with me. Uh, Pet Sounds. Is this safe to do in Ann Arbor? Is it, can I do this in Ann Arbor? This is, this is a great movie uh, to have your kids to see. It's Rudy, uh, an inspiring story. Not just inspiring uh, for kids, but also uh, for, for adults also. An absolutely uh, inspiring story. Uh, I grew up watching uh, James Bond with my dad. He was a James Bond fanatic. And uh, it just, of course, after Sean Connery left, it just kept getting worse and worse. Uh, but this uh, Casino Royale, probably the best Bond uh, since Sean Connery left, and uh, I loved it. All right, um, maybe I shouldn't admit it here, but my sons and I, big Star Wars nuts. And uh, at least my oldest son, Joey, and I both agree that The Empire Strikes Back, easily uh, the best of the Star Wars trilogy, the first trilogy, or the second, of course. Empire Strikes Back, a great, uh, great movie. Again, you can tell uh, who I've been watching movies with <laughs> over the past 10 years. Also, a choice of my sons. I was dragged out to all three Matrixes, but actually, I enjoyed them uh, in Matrix Revolution, even though it got absolutely thrashed by some reviewers. I thought it was a great Matrix. I love the story. I love the message. And uh, this is a must-see. The Manchurian Candidate uh, was released. Uh, actually, it was made right before John Kennedy was assassinated. and. Uh, just an absolutely fascinating story. Frank Sinatra starred in it, and uh, it is a real uh, political and psychological thriller, and uh, 
again, it's, it's, it is something that actually, I think it was made, I think it was made in 62, 1962. Uh, I can tell you uh, all these years later, it uh, still holds it at its edge, and uh, I think it's a timeless classic. Bob Woodward's The War Within actually is a book that uh, I think was a bit misunderstood when it came out. It, it, it tracks the Bush White House um, last two years and, and talks about how the president found uh, Petraeus and uh, how he went around all of his generals to find Petraeus. It's an extraordinary story about how Washington works about the bureaucracy uh, actually inside the Pentagon. And you find out uh, reading this book and a lot of other books like it, uh, that in the Pentagon uh, they play politics, uh, you know, hardball politics too. And again, Woodward gets everybody to talk. So it's, uh, it's a real inside look at a situation. Uh, the Conservative Mind, this is a classic a conservative book, came out in the uh, early 1950s and what is remarkable about it, rereading it, is how the definition of conservative changed from the time this conservative masterpiece came out until today. I actually uh, leaned a lot on Russell Kirk's uh, book uh, in, in writing my own, just to talk about how conservatives had lost their way over the past decade and how they needed to get back to some first principles, basic first principles, shunning dogma and uh, rabid ideology, and this is a great place for conservatives who want to refine their footing to start. Frederick Hayek, uh, also somebody whose name may not be known in, uh, by a lot of Americans, uh, but he had an extraordinary impact on economics and political thought uh, over the past uh, 50 years or so. Uh, he uh, wrote a book called The Road to Serfdom also uh, that came out right after World War II when it was assumed that uh, this country was going to be moving towards socialism, he went the other direction and it had a profound impact on a lot of thinkers uh, over the next 50, 60 years. Mosley Gelb used to run the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, he's one of the brightest minds in foreign affairs. And this book actually uh, lays out um, really my view of foreign policy as well as any other book. And in it, he talks about the mistakes we've made over the past decade, not only the, with the Bush administration, but also the Clinton administration. And he talks about, he goes after Republicans and Democrats alike and talks about how we have to be realists, how we have to be restrained in our foreign policy, uh, and also um, how we need to be refocused. This is an important book, and I certainly hope it's one that President Obama and uh, the rest of Washington's reading right now. It's a must read. Uh, this is Frederick Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, perhaps one of the most important books, political books, of the past half century. It actually came out in 1945, 46, right after World War II, when it was assumed that socialism was going to be the wave of the future, not only in Europe, but also in America. And Hayek uh, dedicates this book to socialists of all parties. Uh, I use that as inspiration for my new book, uh, which I dedicated to conservatives of all parties, but uh, Hayek uh, talks about how an individual can make better choices than a centralized state and he does it in a way, again, that uh, really caused an academic revolution, an intellectual revolution, and eventually, uh, 30, 40 years later, a political revolution. Hey, thanks so much uh, for following me around Borders. Uh, I'm Joe Scarborough and it's great to be with you.